All right, so hypothesis testing for a proportion P, and this will be a two-tail. All right, so the for hypothesis testing, you have to state your null and alternate hypothesis. So uh, the null hypothesis, that's the claim we make about P. So your H naught would be P is equal to some number K. And I'll explain this more when we're working the problem. Uh, and then you say, well, but wait a minute, we have an alternate hypothesis. We think that P is just different from what you're saying. Okay? It's not that we're saying P is less than. We're not saying that P is greater than. Of course, it's one or the other, but we're not specifically saying P is less than. And we're not specifically saying P is greater than. We're just saying P is different than what than the claim. Okay? If you said P is less than, that would be a left-tailed test. If you were saying P is greater than, that would be a right-tailed test. All right, and, and so our alternate hypothesis, H sub 1, would be P is not equal to K. Okay? We just believe P is different than the value stated in the null. And then our sample test statistic, Z, is P hat minus P over the square root of P times Q over N, where P hat is R over N, Q hat is 1 minus P hat. And also in this formula here, this Q here, that is 1 minus this P here, you know, up here. R is the number of successes, N is the number of trials, and I will explain R and N more when we're working the problem. And then P is the proportion specified in H naught. All right, so the number of trials N should be sufficiently large so that both N times P and N times Q are both larger than five. Okay, so then how do we conclude the test? Well, uh, using the p-value and the level of significance alpha, alpha is your level, uh, level of significance, that will be given to you in the problem. They will tell you to use a level of significance of 1% or 5%, maybe even 10%. So alpha could be 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or 0 0.1. So if our p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and say the data are statistically significant at the level alpha. If the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And we'll talk about this more when we, you know, at the end of the problem when we're comparing our p-value to alpha. All right, so let's look at example one, or the only example for this one. So it says a large survey of countries indicate that most people prefer the color blue. In fact, about 24% of the population claim blue is their favorite color. Okay, that's of a bunch of countries. Okay, that's, that's they're saying of all these countries, I don't know how many, don't know which ones, but it's just a bunch of countries. They're saying 24% of the population of all these countries claim blue is their favorite color. Suppose a random sample of 56 college students were surveyed and 12 of them said that blue is their favorite color. Okay, does this imply that the color preference of all college students is different from that of the general population? Use alpha as 0.05. Okay, so let's state our null and alternate hypothesis. So the null hypothesis, that's the claim they're making about the population, about P. They're saying P is 24%. They're saying 24% of all the, of the population of all these countries like the color blue. So here P is equal to 0.24. Okay, but we're coming back and we're saying, okay, we did a random sample. We chose 56 college students and 12 of them said that blue is their favorite color. We think, well, this isn't right. 
we think P is different than what you're saying. We're not going to we're not we're not saying, well, we think it's less or we think it's more. We're just saying it's different. Okay? And so our alternate hypothesis H sub 1 is P is not equal to 0.24. Okay? Now, Let's test n times p, n times q. Make sure both of those are larger than 5. So uh, let's see, n is 0.2. Let me do this in another color. So n is 0.24. q is 1. I'm sorry, not n. p. p is 0.24. q is 1 minus p. Okay, so uh, 1 minus 0.24, that is going to give us 0.76. All right, so n times p is equal to, well, what's n? Well, it was 56 students surveyed. So that's 56 times p, 0.24. So 56 times 0.24 is 13 0.44, so we're good on that one. N times Q, that's 56 times Q, which is 0.76. Obviously, this one's going to be enough if, if this one was. So that is 42.56. And so that's larger than uh, 5. So we're good there. So now we need our test statistic. So our test statistic Z, remember that's P hat minus P over the square root of P times Q over N. Alright, so let's see what we have here. P is equal to, I'm sorry, P hat, we already have P, that's 0.24. P hat is R over N. Well, Okay, so what's R over N? Well, of the 56 students that were surveyed, that's our N, 12 were successful. That's what R is, the number of successes. What's a success? A person that likes the color blue, because that's what we're testing here. Okay, so the number of successes is 12, and so 12 divided by 56 is... And I'm just going to round it to 0.21. Okay. And and I, I will say this. When, when you're working these problems, it, it, I wouldn't round this. Okay. I'm just doing it for the video because I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to write all the numbers out. I just want to make sure you understand what's going on. All right. So obviously we have P. We did that. That's 0.24. Q. That is 0.76. And N is equal to 56. And now we just punch everything in. And so I get Z is 0.21 minus the 0.24 over, and that will be the square root of P times Q over n. Now let's see what we get when we punch that in. Alright, so we get negative 0.53. Now, uh, let me show you this. What I did when I, I paused the video to calculate this formula here, but what I did is I, when I punched this in, I got negative 0.53 okay, as my z value. But just let me show you the difference here. You see how I rounded this to 0.21 and then took this and put it there? Well, what I did after I calculated this, I, I did 12 divided by 56. And when you do 12 divided by 56, you get something like 0.21428571. Okay. What I did, I didn't round it. 
and I just took this and put it right here and recalculated this Z value using what this actually is and let me show you what I got when I did not round was this value you can see the difference okay so like I said for the purposes of this video I'm rounding but when you're working them don't round all right so now let's uh, look at this okay we have a two-tailed test because we're saying P is different okay so that that means a two tail that's here and here we can say it's greater than or it could be smaller than okay one or the other we're just saying it's different we're not saying hey it's less than or hey it's greater than we're just saying it's different so it could be either one okay so this would be like our negative 0.53 and this would be our 0.53 so what we can do is we can just look up the negative 0.53 and that will remember that'll give you this area here to the left and then we double it because we need this area and this area because it's a two-tailed test okay and yes if you wanted to you could look up the 0.53 okay you, you could do either one of these the probability Z is less than negative 0.53 or you could do the probability Z is greater than positive 0.53 and then you look this value up and it's going to give you some answer and then you look this value up but remember because it's greater than you got to do 1 minus whatever you find for the 0.53 you, you should you should know how to look that up in the in the Z table in the standard normal table if you're at this point hypothesis testing okay so usually what I do I'll just look up the negative value because you don't have to do the one minus to get this area over here so I just look up the negative see what that is so our our p-value our p-value is going to be the probability z is less than negative 0.53 but times 2 don't forget that because you've got to this area and this area it's both of them it's a two tail so that's why we're multiplying times two okay so let's go to our curve and look this up and let me get this out of the way because I did this on another video all right so I need I need the probability that Z is less than, and I forgot the number, let's look, negative 0.53. Oh, negative 0.53, so I need my negative numbers. Probability Z is less than negative 0.53. All right, so you see this, that's our negative 0.53, that Z value there. And when we look up our value, that's the area to the left. So negative 0.53, it's taking the top off the, let's see. There's negative 0.5, okay, so that's this, and three. You see that? I know it's cutting it off, but like this would be negative 0.83 we're just down there at negative 5 so there's the 3 let's see where they intersect and there it is 0 0.2981 0 0.2981 okay so that's going to be 0 0.2981 point two nine eight one point two nine eight one and remember that's times two because we have to add that one to it also and two times let's see 
two times point two nine eight one is point five nine six two. Okay. Now I'm going to come over here and just show you. Uh, you see what we did is we did the negative point five three. We did that area to the left. Well, come over here. Let me just show you uh, z greater than positive 0.53. So this would be our 0.53, and we want this area to the right. Well, when we look this value up, that gives us the area to the left. And remember, the entire area under that curve is 1. So if we do 1 minus the area to the left, okay, well, where's 0.53? Well, that's up here. So 0.53. 0.7019.7019 and when we do 1 minus 0 0.7019 we get 0.2981 okay 0 0.2981 same thing that's what I was explaining here earlier all right and we are testing this so our p value is 0.5962 and our level of significance is 0 0.05 that's alpha and we can see that this is greater than 0 0.05 which the 0 0.05 is our alpha so when it is greater than well what do we do then well we fail to reject so we fail to reject the null, H null. Okay. So, so what does that say? Well, at the 5% level of significance, or where, where alpha is 0.05, okay, the data do not indicate that the proportion of college students favoring the color blue is different from 0.24 okay so that's that's our that's what we get from the hypothesis test we did okay we can't really say that it's different college students preference for blue all right so i hope this helped uh that was that was the last video for uh, hypothesis testing. I think that's my ninth one. I've got them on uh, hypothesis testing on the mean, where sigma is known, unknown, and then in these proportions. I did left tail, right tail, and two tail on each one of those. So that's nine videos. I may sit down one. Uh, may sit down and do all these videos again using Excel, show you how to do it in Excel, and then I may come around and do the critical value method. All of the videos I've done so far are the p-value, but you know, you've got p-value, you've got a critical value method, so, and then, you know, of course for Excel, so maybe sometime I'll get those done. You can, uh, check in my statistics playlist and check for them in there and for the you know the excel videos you can check in my excel playlist for that all right so hope this helped don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching